All right, here we go. Let's get started. Aheya basham yashaya wavarak. Shabbat shalom. Barakata. Blessings unto you. Kwam yashara. Rise, O Israel. Welcome to World War Three. Our reference today will be Josephus, Book of the Jews, Antiquities. Uh, and it will be chapter 11, 317 through 345. And then in this reading will be, this video will be called The Prophecy of the Ages for Mature Audience. Um, and we'll be talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Now there's this empire that Daniel the prophet, when we read in Daniel the prophet, the empire that Nebuchadnezzar seen in he, these, the statue form, you'll see gold, silver, bronze, or, or brass, uh, you'll see iron, and then you'll see iron and clay mix, a mixture. It's a statue that he's seen in a dream that he wanted Daniel to see. Now, when we go again, prophecy of the ages, you'll see Nebuchadnezzar and his name in in ancient Farsi, in ancient Akkadian Farsi, it meant Nebo, which is their god. Nebo protect the Caesar, and Caesar meaning emperor or king or ruler. So Nebo protects the king. That's the name of Nebuchadnezzar. And when you see empires come after him, they will take on this name, Caesar. This is the prophecy that Daniel the prophet was talking about. Let's keep going. The Archimedean, the Archimedean Empire, empire, again, empire of the ancient Farsi, Persia under Cyrus II of Persia. Again, this is the silver kingdom. Kingdom. Nebuchadnezzar was the golden kingdom. Kingdom. Cyrus the, the second, who was mentioned in the Bible, is the silver kingdom. Both Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus were mentioned in the Bible. And again, his kingdom lasted from 550 B.C. to 330 B.C. And it fell to Macedonian, the Macedonian Greeks. And the Macedonians, according to the Bible, according to King Hadassah, uh, Queen, excuse me, Queen Hadassah, who was married to... Uh, one of the rulers of the Persian Empire, Queen Hadassah, and you know her as Esther in the Bible. Now, she mentioned that the Macedonians are the children of Esau. One more time, Queen Hadassah mentioned that the Macedonians are the children of Esau. So you have this Macedonian king, Alexander the Great, conquering the, the Persian Empire and his rulership was from 336 to 323 BC and it fell his kingdom fell to his own people four divided divided Greek kingdoms uh, then later to the Romans and you have General Cadasser and he was over Macedonia Greece General Lysichemus over the Ionians which were the children of Japheth and Turkey, which is later will be it will be Byzantine and then the children, uh, the uh, Turkish people. Uh, then we have General Seleucus and he was in charge of Persia from Persia to Syria. And then you have General Ptolemy the first over northeast Africa, Egypt and, and Africa, the the, Af the, uh, the Ethiopian blackface people. All of these emperors were given the emperor godlike status of Alexander II, the Macedonian, who who he got this title from the the people that you know he conquered. He got this title, this emperor godlike status, from the people he conquered. Where did he get it from? He got it from. He got this title from that emperor that that caesar status that that nebuchadnezzar from the beginning and again it's passing on from generation to next kingdom to next kingdom and, and again in the jewish antiquity when we see this macedonian king this edomite as queen hadassah told us this edomite who came into jerusalem he said that he had a dream and i quote alexander speaks of the high priest jadis of Israel in 11 in Jew, in the, the Hebrew antiquities 11 3 3 4 for I saw this very person in a dream stop this Macedonian again at this time the, the ancient Hebrews 
were considered Ethiopian, considered blackface. So Alexander II is looking at a person he's sent with a black face, this Jadius, this Oriental Negro of Israel. Let's let's continue. For I saw this person in a dream, in this very habit, when I was at Dion in Macedonia, who, when I was considering with myself how I might obtain the dominion of Asia, the dominion, the power he's looking for, of Asia, ex exhorted me to make no delay, but boldly to pass over the sea thither, for that he would conduct my army and would give me the dominion over the Persians. Unquote. Again, so this Macedonian Edomite is looking, he's seen it, seeing in a dream, this Oriental Negro and his people actually hand over the kingdom because it's a prophecy that these Caesars, these empire achievers, these empire conquerors would come and destroy the planet. So those ancient Hebrews gave this, their, their, uh, their land, their inherited land over to this Caesar, this coming Caesar, this coming Nebuchadnezzar. And so to finish that off, and again, his, this, uh, the Macedonian Greek, his kingdom was divided by his four generals who became, uh, powerful masters, overlords of those lands. Um, you have the one of them uh, coming up. Well, again, when we look at the word Kaiser and Czar or C C Caesar, again, Kaiser is European Germanic meaning Caesar, emperor, Czar. And one more time, European Germanic is the the Kaiser that's in Middle Europe, meaning even in Germany, uh, when they had their Kaisers, again, the Kaisers were the the empire of the Caesars. They have, I guess, inherited the Julius Caesar thing. So that's what this Kaiser in the Germanic tongue came from. They inherited the power of the Caesars. It was the Roman Empire over Germany, France, you know, and that known world that they had. And again, in Eastern Europe, it, it's called Tsar of the of the 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 Russo or the Russian tongue. Again, meaning the same thing, Caesar, Caesar over the land, this having this power. Now, in the middle of those uh, Caesars that were in the land, we have Philip the Arab in the history, because the Caesars had gods. These Caesars had gods. So this Philip the Arab, he was a Caesar of the Romans, but he was born in Arab land. And he brought on this god named du, Duai Sara, meaning likely one from Sara, as a god associated with Zeus, Osiris, Zoroaster, Bacchus, and Dionysus. These are all godlike uh, beings of the different lands uh, that were conquered by the Caesars, bringing all these these gods together again. Because when you when you form an empire, you have different peoples in different lands having their gods, and in order to secure them all, you got to have a god. First, you have got to have a Caesar, which is the 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 controlling party, and then you have you have to have their mentality. You have to have their mind the gods of those lands and you have to associate every god of those lands with the god that you want them to worship sort of say and again this philip the arab he brought on this associated god with zeus osiris zoroaster into the roman kingdom and this has been going on even before him but i want this one particular because again later this byzantine uh, empire in the Byzantine Empire, the Romans ended up handing over the Turkish Ottoman Empire to them, the Byzantines. So they had these gods, these associated gods, 
Whereas you got the Tetragrammaton, you know, this Jehovah, you have these, the jovial gods of the, the Greco-Romans. So, again, that word again, the Turkish Ottoman Empire, empire. So, you know, these, so the Sultanate of Rome or Rome as the Anatolian Seleuk Sultanate or Turkish Rome. Uh, in Arabic, it's Arum. Again, they have created empire and using their gods to be associated gods of the people of the land that they have conquered. And the reason I'm saying this is that I've watched a video from a Christian pastor and his name by the he goes by the name of Jack Hibbs. Now, in the early 2000s, I visited his uh, church in Chino Hills, California. I remember it because his uh, church is televised and I was so excited as a Christian to go there. And, you know, and Jack Hibbs is a really electric, energizing pastor Um that I enjoyed the, the presentation at that time as a Christian. But now that I am a Hebrew Israelite and I want you guys to go down and see the click on the link and and see his video. And he's going to point his finger at other groups and nations and say, OK, they are the coming Antichrist or, you know, blah, 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 this. But. Here at Indigenous Hebrew Israelite Awakening, right here at Indigenous Hebrew Israelite Awakening, you're going to see that this tetrarchy, which was, again, the four emperors, the Caesars, that is mentioned in the Bible, by the way, the tetrarchy, meaning there's two senior emperors and two junior emperors, and it is the divided kingdom that God is talking about when you see uh, the the two legs and the ten toes that are, you know, both clay and iron. Again, the Bible is so specific about prophecy that even these people like Jack Hibbs, who, you know, they've been Christians for so long that they're not paying attention that God is talking about the Roman Empire. One more time, Europeans do not want to be the people or they don't want to be like the ancient Egyptians against the Israelites. They don't want to be the people that were destroyed by God like the ancient Egyptians were. So they're ready to point their finger at other nations and they're going to give you these prophecies according to their philosophical Christianity and tell you that some Arab or some Turkish or some even the Pope or something like that is the Antichrist and the beast and all this other stuff. When we have a beast system, even today, that has, how do you say, inherited its power from this Nebuchadnezzar system, the Caesar system, even today, you right here in the United States, they teach you Greco-Roman history. The Greco-Romans were the first of everything. Even Alexander the Great, they call him Alexander the Great because he's an Edomite, a Macedonian and of their culture. You know, you know, they the, the greats of their culture. They're calling that, you know, we even go by Greco-Roman law. Based the law system today is based off of Greco Roman law. So, again, the Bible is not talking about no Arab being, you know, the Antichrist, no Chinese man being the Antichrist, no uh, East Asian or whatever. No, no, you know, the Bible is actually talking about the Nebuchadnezzar system, the Nebuchadnezzar system, and those rulers who have circumnavigated their globe, conquering to conquer. And killing people that didn't agree with them on the way, just as the United States is enslaving 
the Negro population and having the Native Americans on their own land in, in containment camps. Just look up the word garrison. It means it, it is a containment on conquered land. And there's garrisons across the United States. They have conquered land, basically. But again, one more time, I want you guys to go and see that video it's attached below. Go see what he's talking about. And then when you come back here, you know, leave a comment, like, subscribe, donate if you like. But leave a comment and let me know what you feel about what prophecy is. Because the prophecy, again, one more time, the prophecy is about Nebuchadnezzar kingdoms, empires that have conquered lands. And God is against those Nebuchadnezzar type places and people who have conquered to conquer. And they have called themselves based upon those gods and the principles of Nebuchadnezzar. I am a Hebrew Israelite. I am a conscientious objector. And I'm also a minister of peace. An administer of peace. Hebrew Israelite out.